Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of K8 MRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. Today we're going to be looking at the Zygu G90. Got to say a big thank you to Richard and everyone at MFJ for sending me this uh, and allowing us to take a look at it. So uh, before we dive in, I also want to remind you if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell so you're notified when I make new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter at K8MRD. Let's see what we got cracking. So I'm not going to do an unboxing because who cares about seeing it get unboxed. I just I do want to show everybody what's in it. Um, obviously, you get the radio itself. You get this nice hand mic. This is the separation cable uh, for the face and the body that is a detachable face. Uh, comes with some literature. This is your warranty card, your manual, uh, and a power cable there. And inside here, there's a little Allen wrench and uh, some screws that I still don't know what are for. So I'm going to take you for a quick little tour around the radio. Um, obviously this is the face, you've got a 1.8 inch color screen, volume knob, uh, this is your VFO, this is a programmable, this knob here is a programmable knob that you can set for different functions. You've got your tuner, your power, your keyer, a lock. Uh, all these buttons have multi-functions just by pressing this function key here. Moving up to the top, we have our mode ba uh, buttons. Uh, so you can cycle between CW, sideband, you know, upper and lower sideband, our band button. It also has these nice uh, crash protectors, we'll call them. <laughs> so if you drop it, you can see you're not going to hurt any of your knobs. Also on the bottom, uh, we have that as well. Moving over to the right side of the radio, we just have our microphone input. On the left side, we have our headphone jack, and then this is your data port for programming the face of this. On the back, we've got our SO239, your keyer input. Uh, this comm is for uh, programming the body of the, of the radio. There's two different uh, programming things that need to be done. Your IQ, an accessory. Um, haven't seen this kind of DC input before, but you've got whatever that's called. Side note real quick, this is your ground knob. This is, <laughs> I think every radio manufacturer should take a page from this. You can actually turn this with your fingers. No screwdriver needed. Every radio in the world should have a ground lug like this. I don't know why they all have that Phillips head. I think that's pretty dumb. Here's our microphone, good size, nice feel to it. Uh, it's pretty lightweight. Um, I actually like this hook that, that's on the back of this. It doesn't have your standard like slot thing that slides in so you can I actually hang this from a hook. Different function buttons here, a lot of these are programmable like your function 1 button, your function 2, you can program the up and down uh, inside the radio so nice little microphone. Here's our power wire, this is uh, 18 gauge wire so pretty thin, lightweight, you really don't need anything thicker this thing doesn't draw a ridiculous amount of current. Comes with two loose ends that we obviously put power poles on immediately and then there is uh, the connector that goes into the radio. So we've got our power button here, we just got to push it, and she fires up. So taking a walk around the screen real quick, we can see we've got two VFOs, which is awesome. This is our power meter here, or our signal meter when we're receiving. Uh, separate SWR meter, I like that. And then you've got a nice spectrum display here, and a nice waterfall display here too, so you get both, best of both worlds. Here you can see we've got a signal meter coming in. And then up here is our volume. If we turn it up, you can see the volume meter going on. Then we've got a couple other things that are going to be happening with these function buttons here. So we can see we've got, if you look at this P, that's on preamp. If we hit this pre button again, you've got an attenuator. If you hit it again, it's off. We've got a compression button here. You'll get a little microphone icon if you have compression on. Then we have a noise blanker, which I have off right now. Now you can see you've got that little kind of digital signal there for noise blanker. We've got our AGC, which is off, slow, fast, or auto. You've got your voltage meter here, which is just a shy low. I'm actually putting 13.4 volts into it. That says 13.1, but uh, good enough for government work, I suppose. So all three of these knobs are also push buttons as well that are going to be defined by this function button. We'll get into that a little bit as well. This is an assignable knob. So right now, if you turn it, I, you can see I have it adjusting the power. You can, you can uh, adjust this for a couple other settings as well if you don't want it to do your power. 
The main VFO here uh, also acts as like a selector knob as well when we get into some of the functions. So you're mostly going to be playing with this knob and the function button if you really want to like deep dive into it. On the top, as we saw, I'm going to change the mode button. You can see we're on USB right now. Now we're on LSB, AM, CWR, CW, and then back to USB. And then the right two buttons here are going to cycle between the bands. This function button I'm going to come back to, but this next button is uh, basically your memory. So if you have any memory stored, you can cycle through there. This button here is going to go between your VFO A and B buttons. This here is your tuner button. So you can see just a short press. You can see this icon turns on and off. And if you long press it, it'll tune it. Our power button here, if we just touch it, and now we're going to use the VFO so we can change the power. And then we'll push it in again to get out of there. Our key button, if we short press it, is going to go between um, our, our CW speed, if we have a manual key or an automatic keyer. Here you can select what kind of keyer you're going to use. And pushing the button again, you're going to uh, go through a few different other CW settings. Down here we have a lock button. If you hold it in, you can see we have a lock icon, and that way nothing's going to get bumped. This also functions as a brightness button as well. This is your VFO memory button here, so I don't have anything saved in, but that's where you would go to your uh, memories there. So now because this is a software defined radio, a lot of this is in the menu. So for example, if we want to use the Vox control, we would push the function button, now that light's green, and then we're actually going to push in the volume button. You can see Vox is off now. We're going to rotate our VFO, now Vox is on. If we push this again, we're going to cycle through different settings. So there's our Vox gain, and again, we can adjust that up or down, push it again. We have anti-Vox. This is like a whistle speech suppressant kind of thing. I, I don't really play with Vox much, so I'm not sure what that is. But if you know what that is, then <laughs> it has that. Uh, you've got a Vox delay. I was playing around with it a little bit. I found that like 0.2 seconds is pretty good. And then we're back to our main menu there. Push function, it's off. So if we hold down our multi-function adjustment knob, they call this. Here's where we can set what function this does. Uh, so I just keep it on power level, but you can change it to your keyer speed, your FFT scale, that's your um, scope, basically how, how big or small it is, um, your frequency in steps, and your squelch level. So if we go ahead and hold down this function button, we get another menu. These are mostly pertaining to the hand mic on menu one here. Uh, we have the options of volume, frequency, and band, that's what the uh, up button, the up down button on the hand mic is gonna do. We can hit over here to next, and then there, this is the function one button. We've got AGC, preamp attenuate, split, or noise blanker, or your compression. Hit next again, this is for the function two button on the hand mic, same settings. So you just kinda have a quick uh, macro, if you will, to these settings. Hit next again. Uh, this is your backlight for your LCD. Next again, your aux in volume, your aux out volume, and then the version that you have. So now the function button here, if we just touch that quickly, it does a few things that makes these buttons have a section, second function now. So if we hit power, here's where we adjust our mic gain. If we hit it again, we can switch between uh, mic and line input. I think that's all this has, yep. If we hit key, now we're at CW volume. This is like how loud you're going to hear your own keyer. Uh, and then if you hit the lock screen, uh, or the lock button rather, this will also adjust. You see how the, the scale on the spectrum scope is going up and down. You can do that. Also by hitting function, if we hit the compression, here's where you can adjust your bandwidth. So right now you see it's at 2900. If we hit the compression button, you see we've got this little arrow here. Now we can narrow that side in, okay? If we hit the NB button, now our arrow goes to the right side. We can narrow that in, push the center uh, VFO knob. Now you can see we're at 1800. You can set it to, it goes from 2900, I think, to 500. The function and the AGC button, you'll see that's how you're going to go and operate your split. And then that leaves us with this button right here, the tune button. I got to say, guys, the tuner on this thing is absolutely amazing. 
I can tune, so right now we're plugged in to my off-center fed dipole outside that's resonant on 40, 20, 10, and six. I can tune every single band from 160 all the way to 10 meters with the tuner on this thing. Not saying it's gonna be efficient, but it'll tune it up. So let's take a look at that. So I'm not gonna go through every band, but I just wanna show you we're on 160 meters right now on <laughs> a basically a 60 some odd foot uh, off center fed uh, dipole. Watch what happens. Done. 1.1 to one SWR. Here's 80 meters, let's try this. Done. I mean, just 1.1. The tutor is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> you can tune a freaking coat hanger with this if you want. Probably tune a head of lettuce. Here's another band my antenna is not resonant on. And just, I mean, <laughs> again, absolutely amazing. So, uh, kudos on the tuner in this thing. It is absolutely just the greatest thing since sliced bread. So let's talk about basic operating of the radio. So it's it's pretty easy to use. Um, I actually find this VFO is really easy to just tune around with your thumb. If you push it in, so you notice the zero is kind of highlighted. If you push the VFO in, you can cycle between the different steps. So if you want to go, if you want to go really fast, you go there. If you want to fine tune, if you're on CW or something, you know, you can fine tune in here. Um, of course, when I'm filming this video, there's literally no one talking on the radio right now, but I want to show you the scope and what better way to do that than to hover on FT8. So you can see the spectrum graph, you can see the waterfall, everything comes in really nice. It's, it's really an overall pretty easy radio to use. I find I don't really need to mess with a lot of the functions. I mean, you're pretty much just, you know, change your band, whatever. So here's 80, we can see some signals coming in. Let's see if we can find a station. So you can see as we tune around, you can see the waterfall going over. You can't make this waterfall bigger though. That's the, that's the one drawback. I wish I could fill up more of the screen with the waterfall as opposed to the spectrum graph. One thing I will say for taking this thing portable or in noisy environments, this speaker is loud as all get out. Let's crank it up here. It's definitely loud. I would have to say this is by far the loudest radio uh, that I have. It's got good audio. For you CW guys, you can see we're on CW now, and it does bring the filter down to 500. When we zero beat a frequency, this light will start uh, blinking. Here's a halfway decent signal. Now also, if we hold down the key button, it's gonna decode. So we'll see if we can find a signal to decode here. It's honestly not the greatest decoder that I've found. If signals are coming in really strong, it'll pick them up, um, but it's kind of hit or miss from what I've seen. But it's nice to have, especially if you're practicing like me, you can, you know, you can at least listen to the dits and dahs and, and see mostly what they uh, are saying. So that's pretty neat. They could probably tweak that a little better with a firmware update, I would guess. So now really one of the most important things about this being that I do portable activations and probably most people that are interested in this radio are going to be wanting to be taking a portable running battery power. How much current does this thing draw? Right now we're drawing about a half an amp. I think if I have the brightness up, um, it might go a little higher. I've seen this high, at its highest about 0.6 amps um, just on receive. So not a whole heck of a lot. I have this set, let's see, we've got our power set at 20 watts right now. And I've got my key here. And I'm just gonna lay on it. And we're gonna see what our max output is. We're getting about 4.8 amps, call it. So, not too terrible. 
that will last a very long time on a 20 amp hour battery. So here's something that also is really, really cool about this radio. This has uh, basically an SWR scanner in it. So if we hold the power button down, we're gonna see this scanner here. That's scanning the SWR of the antenna. So I'm on a non-resonant uh, frequency right now and you can see that it's not the greatest. If we hit the uh, pre button for bandwidth here, we can adjust the steps. So now we're scanning 9.894 to 10344, and we can make that greater all the way up to five kilohertz, so we can go to one kilohertz. So that kind of shows us what our antenna looks like. Now, if we tune it, now the tuner's on. If we hold the power button down, you can see it's gonna be crappy, and then it goes down to where it's tuned at. That is a really cool function. Also really useful, if you don't have an antenna analyzer, you could theoretically make your own antenna just using this as your analyzer. So that's, I mean, an analyzer is 300 bucks for a halfway decent one, if not more. So that's really cool. Let's check, here's 40 meters. Let's see, uh, turn the tuner off. We can see what this looks like. It's, my antenna's pretty resonant here, so no surprise that it's just sitting there. But if we open up the bandwidth a bit, Let's see, go five kilohertz, you know, we can see where we're, where we're resonant at. So what a great feature. They really, they really packed a lot of features into this radio. So I am pretty darn impressed with it so far. So anyway, guys, just to kind of recap about this radio, I, I kind of wanted to just give a, a first look at it. Uh, it's winter here in Michigan. We've got probably seven or eight inches of snow on the ground. So uh, I'm not doing any portable operations until uh, some of that melts or all of it melts. <laughs> I will absolutely be doing some POTA work with this. Um, I really like this radio. Some pros about it, it's lighter than my 891. It draws half the current. The tuner alone, uh, to me, makes it, work it worth it. Uh, just because when I'm using uh, a non-resident antenna, man, you can just tune up anything. I like the waterfall, the spectrum scope, all of that is, is really nice. After having the 7300, you really get spoiled with those with those waterfalls and finding signals and stuff. A couple things I don't like about the radio, uh, and they're not really deal breakers, but it would have been nice if they added them. One, it doesn't have a notch filter, so uh, especially that's important to me when I'm running POTA and some jerk decides to key up right on the frequency, you can't notch that out, so you just have to sit there and listen to them tune, uh, which is really rude, by the way. Don't do that, tune off frequency. Uh, there's also no uh, noise reduction. So I wish it had a little bit more in terms of filtering. Um, again, not a big deal breaker, but it is nice to just kind of get rid of some of that uh, like the 7300 or the 891 has, or even uh, other radios in its class like the uh, X5105 that I will also be doing a review on. Another thing, kind of weird that they couldn't have built it in because it has these protectors. There's no foot stand, so it's just laying flat. You can't kick it up. Um, again, not a big deal. When I, I did take it out portable uh, once before the weather broke and I just ended up kind of leaning it on my uh, battery bag. So not a big deal, but those are just kind of little nuances that, like I said, not really a deal breaker, but it would have been nice if they would have put it in. But uh, for the price of this radio and the features that it does have, I think it's an absolutely fantastic bit of kit. So uh, look for me doing some portable activations with this in the future. And uh, stay tuned for more episodes of KNMRD Radio Stuff. Thanks, guys.